Okay, so this is our smart learning thermostat. Um, Nesty. Nothing's happening yet because it's uh, not long been plugged in. And I think when you buy these, when I first plugged it in, there was nothing for about half an hour. So there is a, I think there's a, a lithium ion phosphate battery in here um, that obviously needs to be charged up when you get it. So out the box, plug it in for half an hour first before you're going to get it to do anything. Eventually you get the home logo and it's asking you to download the app, I think, off the logo on there if we can catch it. So it plugs into a USB port where it gets its power from. I've got mine plugged into a one of those socket outlets with the uh, USBs already in there but you do get the little power adapter with it. So that's the unit quite heavy so you're not going to push it over when you when you're adjusting your settings. Then we've got the uh, this is called the heat link. Got a nice flash cover on it. It just pops off. Underneath we've got the um, power supply which is the two lithium 1.5 volt batteries. We've got this small compartment we can open and inside you can see the terminals. So the only ones we're interested in because I'm only going to be using this with open therm are these two on this side which is OT1 and OT2, open therm 1, open therm, open therm 2. And these are bi-directional and they're bipolar and they're very, very low volt voltage. It's just a data stream. So you don't want to be putting any mains voltage in this, otherwise you're going to cook your, um, you can probably cook this as well, but you're going to cook the, uh, the main board on your boiler, which you don't want to happen. However, if you are going to use it as a normal room stat, which you can, it'll still be semi-smart. Um, we've got these terminals on this side. So we've got a, um, a common at the top and a normally open, and I'm not sure what the FP is. I think it's closed when you're not calling for heat and there's a diode in there. Uh, in the line and it's only very very can only take low current but obviously these are the two you would be normally using which is your common and your normally open um, which is going to give you a closed contact when the boiler is calling for heat and you can also manually override everything just by pressing this thing if you press it for a second and let it go it'll close that contact and ask the boiler for heat if you press it again, it'll release the normally open contact and it'll got switch off. So a couple of mounting screws you get with it, wherever I've hid them. There we go. You obviously need to put your roll plugs in. And this isn't going to pick up the screw holes on the standard thermostat mount because obviously it's a different footprint. So like me, I've got to start again because um, I'd already fitted a hive and um, it's a different screw hole mountings. So moving on from there we also get a you get a back plane or a back plate with it and this would actually lift it off the surface and give you the opportunity to go surface mount with your cables if you're going to go for surface cable mount option which I don't need so that's not going to get used and you also get these um, two connectors. These are actually uh, a copy of, um, of a Wago connector. So any terminals that you're not going to use, you just flip the little levers up and you put the cable inside. And when you release it, it holds the cable. You have to be mindful that there's two of these on the connectors on this, in the kit. But whatever you connect into one is going to be connected into the other. So don't put your live and neutral or your live and earth or whatever in the same pod. I mean, they're not using these connectors in what they've been designed for. In fact, I'm just 
Uh, these are this is a genuine Wago connector. This is a three-port connector, and obviously whatever you put in one is going to connect into all the others. So if you're looking just to use it as it suggests in the instruction, as a terminator, don't <laughs> connect another wire into it because obviously it's going to be a dead short. So not really used for what they should be used for, but um, it's a good way of isolating the cables. And that is about it that's in the box. So the next bit we're going to set up the um, the app which I've got to download onto the tablet. So I'll just get ready to set that. Okay it's asking me to add a product. Hit the plus sign. Asking me to scan the barcode. Barcode scan. Saying you want to use the thermostat E, meet it, yes we do. Next, plug the stat in, it's already plugged in. And now it's going to try and make this connection. Over Bluetooth by the way while it's setting up. So uh, if you're on iOS, then you need to manually switch your Bluetooth on. But if you're on Android, I think it automatically um, switches the Bluetooth on for you. So now it's asking for my router. It's asking me for a password. So I'll just switch it off while I just put that in. So, passwords in. Next, setting up the Wi-Fi, so it says, connecting. And now we've got a, a spinning set of lights on the front of the Nest thermostat. So it's obviously looking for something. It says it's testing the Wi-Fi, and now it's setting up the Nest network. Could be a bit slower on mine here because uh, I'm actually in the workshop and um, I'm quite a way off the uh, router which is in the house. Finishing, it's adding it to the Nest account. Still cooking. Finishing. It may take a while. If it does, I'll switch you off. It's been added to the account. OK. Next. English UK language. OK, that would be fine. Now pull out the tab underneath the heat links fabric cover. I've already done this, but I've actually put a tab back in. The tab just goes over one of the double um, A battery terminals so the battery doesn't get flat while it's obviously in transit or storage or whatever so the tabs coming out tabs out okay next scan the code on your heat link well just by the batteries uh, there's a little barcode on there and also um, when the battery link has been pulled out or the tab you get this little blue light and I think that's the bit where it's actually talking to the thermostat. So now the heat link has accepted the barcode. It says make sure the light's on and glowing blue which it is. So next. So now it's saying that the thermostat is connecting to the Nest E heat link. So again we've got the spinning lights on the thermostat and a solid blue light on the heat link. 
and now it's starting to flash the blue light so it might be accepting the connection now it says it's finishing adding it to the nest account now the light's gone out the little blue light still not there yet it's obviously thinking still saying it's finishing it may take a while it's been added so we're on now it says continue to the installation it's asking us to watch the installation video I don't think that's going to happen for me next so saying what tools you need flathead screwdriver drill torch blah blah I don't need to look at that blank screen come on so now it's telling me to switch the power off I'm not going to do any of this yet we're going to do this when we get into the house so I'm just going to run on next to this it's asking what type of thermostat are you replacing I'm not really interested in any of that stuff but I'm just going to click on I could click on none um, I'm going to go for none or if if I was actually replacing the hive which I was I can say wall mounted but then it's going to prompt me to disconnect wires etc which I'm not interested to look at so I'm going to say none so you'll need some materials oh yeah we need a bit of two core it doesn't tell you what type of two core but I wouldn't go anything less than say 0.5 of a mil squared because it's it's only data anyway but you don't really want to go any smaller because you'll be struggling to tighten the terminals up do you want to download your heating systems installation manual no I don't and at this point if you're struggling it says find your nearest nest pro so they've obviously got um, a group of people who you can speak to who can come down and install it for you obviously if you've got some spare money so now I moved on from there next so is it going to be an on off thermostat no it's not not in my case because I want to use this open therm connection however it's still a smart thermostat in the fact that it'll do far more things that a, a standard on off thermostat will do because it's also going to look at different conditions there about the house and outside but I'm going to go for the open therm because that's what we're using hit the open therm it's asking me to um, find an S Pro and no, I don't think so next it's asking me to make the connections um, onto the board in the uh, boiler which we will do when we get into the house so I'm going to say I've done it so next and now it's asking me to remove the terminal cover off the heat link which we've already done and we've already identified which two screws we're going to use or which two terminals we're going to use so next mount it on the wall do the holes line up blah de blah blah ginger well obviously mine won't I'll be drilling new holes but that's a not for this so I'm going to say the holes line up in case it asks me to go out and buy a drill <laughs> check if you need the optional trim plate I don't think I will do because my cables are coming through the plaster no problem next um, and now it's asking me to, to go into the terminal block with the two wires in OT1 and OT2 no problem attach the heat link to the base okay attach the wire cover back on okay attach the cover to the heat link okay switch the power back on okay and does your system have a programmer mine doesn't but if you did have a separate timer what you would have to do is set your timer to be on all the time because all the timing controls now are going to be taken over by your Nest E thermostat so I'm going to say no now where's the heat link going to be situated well in my case it's going to be in the living room selected now it's asking about the type of boiler it's gas uh, find a spot in the room um, for your 
heat for your um, thermostat so obviously I'll want to get there whatever so it's just saying you've got to make sure it's in a place in the room you're obviously not going to be near a gas fire or anything so it's got to be in a place in the room or in a room that's not going to be affected by if you've got a wood burner or something or you're going to be switching on an AC unit for some reason or you know, you're going to be switching on electric fire make sure it's got a good Wi-Fi connection and it's got to be within 30 meters of this which mine obviously is going to be and finish testing so where did you put the thermostat it's asking me put it in the living room I've already told you that so now you can start scheduling the thermostat this means we're going to be putting the time that we want the heating to come on at a certain temperature and go off at a certain temperature this is a bit unusual in the fact that an ordinary timer would actually switch the heating on and switch the heating off once or twice a day or whatever um, depending on your needs and you would set your thermostat individually this works slightly different the timer is running all the time and all you're doing is you're putting values of temperatures in at certain times so in my case I want 20 degrees heat in the front room at half seven in the morning get ready to go out to work I want it switching off so it won't let me switch it off so you have to just have an on temperature which is going to be 20 degrees and an off temperature which in my case I'm going to knock it down to 15 so I never want the rooms to go lower than 15 degrees then you've got a, another set of values for when you come in at night switch it back on at half five at 20 and then when it gets to 10 o'clock at night or whatever knock it back down to 15 so that's how the timer is going to work but I'm going to do all that <coughs> when we've got this thing hooked up into the boiler so I'm going to click on next see what it says ask for a, an eco efficient temperature okay it's going to say 19 or less in it ah choose a temperature for the uh, for the hot, hot tap for the water so it's a 20 kilowatt boiler on heat but it's 30 kilowatts on um, hot water so I like my one mine at 65 because um, we've got a really nice big shower and we like it blasting out so my mixer taps going to sort that out so I've gone up to 65 with mine for me hot water tap hot water next test the system okay we're not going to do that now because I've got to plug it all in first so in this respect we're done hit the done and that's it and it's come up saying there's a living room error because obviously it knows that it's not connected to the heat link connections OT1 and OT2 because even though it's let's say a very very low voltage it obviously knows when there's continuity in that circuit so if it's not connected into the boiler it knows so we're going to sort that out when we put it all in but as far as we're concerned the app's loaded we've set up everything we can and if I just look on this screen it's saying the nest can't connect to this equipment properly I'm not going to click on continue because obviously I've not got my heat link connected into the boiler yet so next job is to fit this on the wall then we'll go and have a look inside the boiler where the connections are going to be okay so uh, here we are so before you do anything absolutely anything before you take the boiler core off or go anywhere near where those um, thermostat connections are you want this is off so my boiler feed spur now is off and you want the fuse to be pulled out so the fuse is not in the system and the thing is switched off first job and now we're going to have a look at uh, mounting the uh, the heat link in place of the existing hive thermostat 
Okay, this is uh, where I've removed this one. This one and this one is the original footprint from the hive stat. Unfortunately, nothing lined up, but I need to cover the existing holes. So this one and this one now, I've just measured and tested that the, uh, the link unit will fit and it'll cover all the existing holes up. So I'm using these plasterboard screws because this particular wall, this cupboard wall, is just a stud wall. So I've got four wires and the existing wires were, this one was live, this one was neutral and the yellow, in my case, was the onward signal when the contact closed to switch the boiler on. <clears throat> well obviously now I don't need this one and I don't need this one. By the way we have made sure that uh, it's isolated and I've even put the meters on there, they're absolutely dead. But in my case, because my connector block is on the other side of this wall, I'm going to pull these two wires, disconnect them from the wiring unit and take them right out the system. So all I've got left is this, which was one of the original normally open links to the boiler, and this was the spare, the green one. So all that's going to be left of those two, and they're going to go in OT1 and OT2. Doesn't matter which way around you put them, because it's not polarised. So I'm going to get rid of these two now, right out from the wiring centre, so there's no chance of any high voltage coming in anywhere. And I'm just going to make sure that this one, which wasn't doing anything before, is now going to go back with the spare wire, so I'll have two cables only going back to the boiler. So I'm just going to fit this now. Okay, so the terminals are made. So I've pulled completely pulled out the neutral and the live right back to the wiring centre, taken those wires out completely. So I know there's absolutely no mains power there. And I've now got my... OT1 and OT2, the green and the yellow um, hooked in. They're a bit awkward to get in, around 90 degree, especially if you have it in your hand, this before you screw to the wall, then put them in, tighten them up, then put the thing on the wall. But it's all done, so this can all be nailed up now. And then we back upstairs for the final disconnect and reconnect. Okay, we know we've powered off, we know we've pulled the fuse, I've actually disconnected the live terminals at the wiring centre back that was in the little um, unit that sends the onward signal into the boiler. So now we pull the boiler front off, so slap these two screws off, you don't have to take them out, and you just pull out at the bottom because they're slotted and lift off the pegs at the top that's that off this is on a magnetic catch so you just pull and down it comes so let's pick you up now and just see what's going on inside here so this is the wiring centre and if you click that all the way back, it will click and stay. Yeah. So this is your live neutral and earth feeds in. And this terminal and this terminal is where your original thermostat would have been for a make and break thermostat. So they're now redundant, they're gone. So we've now got our pair of cables which have got nothing whatsoever to do with any voltage, mains bolt voltage anywhere. So though that pair of cables now just goes directly back to the uh, unit that's mounted on the wall. And those two cables come back in this one here, in my case. So everything's glanded through the, through the case. And these are no or no or low voltage contacts. OT1 and OT2. 
it is absolutely irrelevant which way round you connect these and I've done mine in um, 0.5 of a mil squared cable um, you could probably go smaller you could obviously go bigger but it's not the easiest thing to get the terminals in here because you've got this earthing block in front so you can take this screw out lift the connection strip out I put some crimp shoes on mine and uh, in they go and it's a job done so those out get rid of all that high voltage sorry mains voltage wiring get your pair cable in from the unit OT1 and 2 into these two terminals make sure that there's nothing 240 about any of these and you've just got continuity on both cables back to the unit that's mounted on the wall and we're good to go so that closes that is back on its magnet I'll just set you down and uh, its cover back on And you're going to tighten the screws up and it's a job done. Okay we're all connected up. Just thought I'd just quickly show you this. Um, now that we're hooked up into open firm we don't get control anymore of the water temperature for the hot water. You can adjust it again on the actual sensor itself and also the central heating temperature doesn't change because now it's all going to be worked out between the Nest E STAT and learning protocol and the open therm chip which is inside the boiler so we know we're definitely now hooked up into open therm Okay, I thought I'd just show you this on the computer screen because um, it's a lot easier than looking at it on the phone screen or the tablet screen because of the size. But there's a piece of software called um, Bluestacks. You can download free of charge from uh, the Play Store, Windows 10, and it's an emulator that'll emulate like um, you know your smartphone. So. I've already downloaded it, Bluestacks, Bluestacks 5, the latest version, don't have to have the latest version, um, but once you've loaded Bluestacks, you can go to the Play Store, download the Nest app, and it's exactly the same as what's on your tablet or phone. So, already preloaded into Bluestacks, so we can just see what's going on a little bit easier here. So this is exactly what you'd see on your phone, obviously, in uh, landscape, not portrait, but it still all fits in there. So if we go on the front screen to the gear wheel, we've got a few options here. Obviously, that's my account. That's the legal information from uh, Google, because obviously the privacy, etc. You're putting your de details in there. And then this one, home info. There's a bit of information you can put in here, especially the about. So type of build, type, type of dwelling, single family, number of thermostats, well we've only got one, but if you had a multi-zone area, um, like if you had a, another thermostat controlling on an S plan, another area of the house or another floor or something, you can have more than one thermostats. So we've only got one in this case. Construction of the house, built in the 1980s, that just gives them a rough idea of the insulation value of the property as it tries to work out your heat load requirements and obviously the weather compensation, load comp compensation, etc. And then, okay, this is probably not very accurate, but um, it's probably, mine's a bit more than this, I think, but I just put something in there. So. If you've not done your um, heat loss calculations, uh, you can put something in there that might give the 
square footage of your building, give it a rough idea of the footprint, and it all helps in this um, learning process about how this thermostat learns your heating habits and learns a little about, bit about the environment. Home away assist, I've not got it, but I've now got the thermostat in the dining room, I've moved it out of the living room. Um, it's probably the best place for it as far as I'm concerned. But you can decide whether, because it knows by your phone, and it knows actually by whether you've been in that room or not, because there's a PRI sensor inside the um, thermostat, so it knows whether you're in or you're not in. So if you've got your phone linked to it and it's not seen any activity in the house, it'll turn the heating down because it knows you're not there. So I don't want that feature, but yeah, you can do. Activation history, you can see when the PAR has been activated or when your phone said you've been away from the house. Okay, I'm not into the Big Brother stuff so much, but mine will be nothing in here because I've not got it switched on, but it can see your activation history and it'll tell you like obviously I've walked past the sensor a few times today and yesterday etc but that's not for me <clears throat> um, spaces it can if you've got other nest products as well but um, it's just saying where my there's my um, heat link in the hallway there's my room thermostat and obviously if I had a, a nest I haven't logged, put them in there in there because they're on Google Home but I've got a couple of other nest devices, I've got a camera I've got a couple of those um, switched outlets etc etc but um, I've not put them on there yet because I don't need to and I've got it switched off anyway but it's obviously your choice um, Notifications, yeah I mean I haven't got this switched on either but you can actually switch that on and because it's got your email address it'll send you a summary of your how long your heating's been on for the times it came on for and what temperatures you had it set to and how long the boiler was lit for and you get a weekly summary if you click that also that's not for me um, and then if you want more than one person to have I'm not going to click on it because it's got other people's names on there but if you wanted your partner or your son or your daughter or whoever lives with you to also be part of this home and away thing um, you, oh, and you wanted them to have the app on the phone linked to this thermostat you'd have to include them and that's why you'd put them there so contacts we're not looking in there but if you've linked your mobile phone to it then it will nest aware is about other products that you can link into it like can link other PAR devices in the room so it knows which rooms you've been in etc and okay I'm not going into any of those other stuff but if you wanted to add another Nest product click, click on there if you want to buy some obviously go on there etc etc but those are not for me but now if we click on this icon now we look in inside again you get this on your phone app I've got it switched off at the moment because um, I'll just open this so this is where you switch it on or off it's off at the moment it's actually 23 and a half degrees in the dining room because we have the sun through the patio doors it gets quite warm so it's off at the moment anyway but I've just got it switched off because I'm playing around if you want to switch it on you click there when you click it on at the moment the target temperature we'll be looking for would be 15 degrees because it's out of my time zone at the moment I'm not at work today but normally it would come on in the morning for a couple of hours be off all day till we come home at night then come back on again we can look at the schedule in a second so you can either manipulate this with your finger on the app or you can use the little up or down arrows here to move so you can boost it if you want to or whatever so what else have we got in here moving along we've got eco um, anything below 19 degrees on your heating hot water temperature is considered to be eco mode and um, sorry eco mode 90 degrees air temperature in your room but also what it also relates to an eco mode is also about um, I did speak about didn't I the Delta T so the differential between the outgoing hot water 
into the radiators and the incoming hot water from the radiators to see how much absorption of that heat you've put into the room well generally you're looking about a del delta T of 20 degrees but there's a little bit more to it than that you really need to have that return temperature coming back less than 54 degrees because the boiler won't condensate properly if it's above that so if you've got um, being able to link into the um, open therm and not the thermostat you know your boiler's going to do all this for you but if you're only going to use this as a thermostat device you need to go back to your boiler and you need to turn down your water temperature for the central heating so that the return line temperature is less than 54 degrees the lower that temperature is the greater the condensation or the dew point will occur in the product of combustion when you're burning the gas with the air, with the air and the oxygen nitrogen etc the waste product from the humidity out of the atmosphere is water this water obviously does a state change or a phase change in thermodynamics uh, into water vapor or steam and that steam contains a lot of energy and if it comes out through a plume you know through the um, boiler flue then you're, all you're doing is warming the street up so if you can get that temperature down return line temperature down to 54 degrees or below then you're going to be making money or you're going to be saving money sorry and uh, it's all going to be good for the environment so delta T um, you want it, the return line temperature in the central heating water to be less than 54 degrees very important um, schedule yeah this is the schedule where I've set my times and my temperatures so unlike an ordinary time clock on an off device this thing's on all the time it's running all the time obviously and all you're doing you're changing from when it comes on to a temperature and when it goes down to another temperature so this is my window for Monday so we look at this the boiler is going to look for heat of 19 degrees Celsius at 7.30 in the morning and it's going to maintain that temperature until 8.30 till I leave for work and at 8.30 it's going to drop down to 15 degrees and when I come home at night I'm going to get ask the boiler to fire up again to 19 and it's going to stay from 4.30 till half nine at 19 then overnight back round till 7.30 the following morning it'll drop down to 15 you can add more time zones in here you can remove time zones this is nice to see without using it on the phone but if I click on this figure if I go up I can change the temperatures and if I go I'll just put it back to 19 and if I click and go this way I can adjust what time it comes on at and obviously I can adjust on this one what time it goes off at and also change the temperature it's quite a nice little not very easy with your fingers on a phone easier on the tablet but works quite well so once you've set a, your Monday up my Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday was going to be the same Saturday and Sunday generally if you want to lie in you have those set a little bit differently but you can I can do it on the computer but if it was a touch screen on my phone you can press and hold that and it'll give you the option to copy so you copy your days or whatever so it's quite easy to use then the last one on this bit is the history there'll be nothing in there yet because I want to just set it up but as you're using the um, thermostat it's building a history up about what the temperatures were how long the boiler was on for how long it took to warm up how long it took to cool down and all that information will be held in the history so you know there's some good stuff on there and if I just scroll down from here there's a bit of information here so this is live information so it's telling me that in our dining room it's 23 degrees because the sun's been on it it's also saying that it's 20 in the hallway even though we've not had the heating on because I've just got a bit of heat drift from one room to the other so the hallway is where the heat link is that's connected to the boiler and also because it's not just a temperature sensor 
It also measures the humidity. So the humidity inside the house is 61%. And then because we want weather compensation and you've told it where you live, um, it's going to use your postcode and various weather stations in the vicinity to see what the outside temperatures and today down here in sunny Cornwall it's uh, 17 degrees so nice bit of information on that panel and now we can click on the gear wheel not from this panel now but from this panel got a little bit more information in here so I've got it at learning at the moment so it's learning what I do and it's going to learn how long it takes to heat up, how long it takes to cool down, etc, etc. Um, time to temp, I've got that switched on. So, okay, if it needs to learn what's going on first. But it'll now going to work out how long it takes to heat my room up to whatever my thermostat's set to. And that links into this thing, this true radiant. So, you can say, well, I'm going to get up at half past seven to get ready for work but I'd like it to be already coming up for warm you know when I get up so I could actually give it a time when I think I'd like it to preheat you can have it off one hour or whatever or you can set to the default at the moment there's no information there because it hasn't got any because I've not had this thing running long enough so <clears throat> sunblock um, Nothing to do with uh, putting your sunscreen on when you're lying on the beach. But if you've got your Nest thermostat in a room like I have now, where I have a lot of direct sunlight, maybe through the PAR or whatever, it can recognise when you're not taking re radiant heat, um, you know, shining on the thermostat and upsetting the settings. So that's on for me as well. I've got the leaf setting on because, uh, <clears throat> you know, I'm trying to get my 92% at least um, maximum efficiency out of the amount of gas I'm burning so I've got a, an absolute fallback temperature in the house even um, this is a default temperature you can drop it lower if you want to so it should never theoretically get any lower than nine degrees even though even if I have it switched off and obviously I've got a safety temperature it's something like a um, frost stat but if your boiler's in the cellar or in a building outside or in the loft like mine is this isn't going to work your boiler's still got a chance of freezing so you still need to have a frost stat if you had your boiler in an area where it was exposed to the outside conditions more than it being in the house but this won't now allow the water temperature in the boiler uh, the water temperature in the room where the thermo thermostat is to go below 4.5 degrees less than the chance of anything freezing up hopefully you'll never get anywhere near that because we've got all this protection built in still need your frost stat though if you've got your boiler in the loft or in a room outside a plant room outside or something so just bear that in mind temperature units celsius or fahrenheit obviously we're in the uk iso we're on celsius it tells you a bit about your wi-fi connection we don't need to look at that this is a good feature um if you were uh, if you rent the property out and you want to lock all your settings so you can lock a maximum you can lock the temperature to whatever you think you want the maximum to be but also you can lock it within a window so you can you can let it go up a few of three or five degrees above whatever you think you, you know you need to have it set to or you can lock it exactly to that value obviously I don't need that feature but it is in there asking you where the stat is my stats in the dining room equipment so it's a boiler, it's gas, I'm controlling it by open therm and I'm transferring the heat by conduction in radiators by water. So another bit of info you need to stick in there. Technical info, yeah, so it gives you some information about what's going on with your Nest E thermostat, serial number, etc, etc, software, never been updated yet because never been switched on long enough. and. Um, it's the battery voltage, oh, excuse me, the battery voltage that's inside the th thermostat, not the one that's on the wall. But if you go to the heat link on the wall and we look at the technical info on that one, 
I think I did say that it does give you the battery voltage for this. It doesn't, but what it does tell you, it tells you whether the battery is okay or not, and it will tell you that when it needs to be replaced. Obviously, this has never been updated either because it's not been on long enough. I'm not sure what's in your data. Should we be looking at that? Oh, this is the privacy um, settings from Google, what you have to accept, which is like most things these days. But yeah. And uh, there we go. So, last little bit now. I'll just give you a scroll round of the um, Nest E thermostat in the dining room because there's just a couple of things on there that uh, you can change. So I'll just switch that back off because I don't need it on. And there we go. So blue stacks. It's worth putting on your phone if you want to emulate, emulate any apps that you can only get on a smartphone. Okay, here we are. So um, you can actually get this. You can either have it in sleep mode and it's off until you touch it, then it'll come on. Or you can let the PIR turn it on and off so when you walk near it or walk past it, it'll come on like it has now. So you press the screen at the bottom here and now you, you, you can play around with whatever. So we're just going to have a look at some of the settings. So into the gear wheel, press OK. Schedule we looked at um, on the screen on the, um, on the computer in the workshop but obviously you can do it on your smartphone. I think you can do it here, but I think it's going to be a bit awkward. But So I'm not going to even attempt it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's in there. So I'm going to cancel that. He said. Done. So you've got to slide to one side to come out of it. So back into my gear wheel. History, there'll be nothing in there. It's exactly the same as we looked at on the computer screen because it's not been on long enough. There's going to be nothing on there. Home Away Assist, we spoke about this. You can have it so that it knows through the PAR or if your phone's out of the vicinity. Um, whether you're in the house or not, and it can turn down or switch off or whatever when you're not here. I've, I've got mine. I've, I'm ignoring all those settings for myself. I'll just switch mine on and off myself. There was my minimum eco temperature, 9 degrees. And the safety temperature, which is not relating to where the boiler's sighted, so just bear that in mind. You still need a frost stat if it's in an area where it could freeze if you're not around. Nest Sense is if you're going to link it with other products like, uh, you know, your, your uh, Nest um, cameras and stuff like that, which I'm not going to. Wake up on display when you walk past or touch the screen. Click sound. So I've got the click sound on just to annoy people. Celsius or Fahrenheit or centigrade or Fahrenheit. Date and time, it's going to automatically set by the internet because obviously it's talking through Google. This is a good thing. If you've got an analog clock type or whatever, old time clock linked into your central heating timer, no need to worry anymore about daylight saving time, British summer time, Greenwich mean time, whichever way you want to say it, because this will update straight away on its own which is, uh, you know, another thing you don't have to play around setting all your clocks, you know, at the end of Easter and uh, at the fall there. So language, obviously. <laughs> English, am I connected? Yes, I am. Network, that's my network. 
lock it or unlock it like we spoke about uh, on the computer screen equipment it gives the same you know combi boiler um, I've got the hot water set at 65 because I want it you can have it 60 apparently is the um, is the eco setting so you can adjust it there up or down so I can change it here to whatever value but I want the 65 Nest Pro if you want to phone up your Nest Pro installer and get him to come down and fit this for you I don't think so how much money have you got um, software version technical info don't know what's in there or you can look through and I think it gives you the um, like the versions the serial numbers etc the bits of kit that you've got legal info not interested reset you can do a hard reset or a rough soft reset a soft reset is it re it reboots this but keeps all your settings hard reset clears everything out of it and starts it afresh so if you're ever going to upgrade this to a, a nest version 3 or whatever and you wanted to sell this on ebay make sure that you do the full reset because if you've got that data information being sent to you once a week to tell you how you're doing with your heating you'll be getting that coming every week or even though you've not got it so you've got to make sure you you delete that information <laughs> before you move it on let's hope you would anyway and that's it so you've been round the clock as it were so uh, yeah very pleased quite happy um, so Hive smart thermostat absolutely no and uh, this one nest absolutely yes there's one more thing I just want to talk about um, unfortunately I've um, I've gone a bit overboard with this now and um, I'm now going to link in to that OT1 and OT terminal with a gateway and I'm going to look inside the boiler when it's running I'm going to use a, a Wemos and an Arduino so I can, re I can see all the temperatures and all the values and all the settings inside the boiler so um, that won't be for a couple of weeks as I've just ordered the, the card and the semiconductors and I'm going to build it up myself so that'll be in a a couple of weeks time so if you want to have another look in a couple of weeks that info might be in there and I might put some stuff on there how to actually build the gateway and how to wire it into the system so there we go folks hive no nest yes